Good morning and welcome back. Now let's take a quick look at your news headlines. Millions of Americans hit the road for Christmas today. I talked to some of the motorists on Kentucky's roadways. I'm Greg Robinson live from I-75 and I'll have that story coming up. Earlier today I talked to UK junior Kela Snowden who told me she hopes to one day host her own TV show. But Kentucky students may have to wait if a new federal budget is passed and financial aid is cut back. I'm Greg Robinson and I'll tell you why a college degree might cost that much more coming up. The next price increase for folks in Fayette County might be in their garbage. I'm Greg Robinson and I'll tell you why Lexingtonians say it's like throwing their money away coming up. Good morning, I'm Greg Robinson. Today is Tuesday, August 30th. Tonight's top story at 6. Today officially started the holiday travel season. Over 92 million Americans will either travel to visit family or friends. I talked to some of the folks who are traveling on I-75 and asked them about their decision to drive. It was the eve before Christmas Eve and gas prices were high, but plenty of travelers still willing to drive. I mean, if you look at the, the price of a plane ticket versus the price of driving the car, I mean, even the prices of uh, plane tickets are higher now because of gas prices. So Some carried boxes and presents galore, while others I'd talked to carried something more. Including a mounted deer head that our son-in-law caught shot last year. <laughs> Myself, my wife, and my two uh, sister-in-laws. Plus, we decided to bring the dog this time so the family can see the dog in Atlanta. So. And if you plan to be naughty on Kentucky's roadways, local law enforcement has something to say. Don't do any kind of erratic driving. Our officers are going to be out uh, throughout the remainder of the weekend and into early next week. So if you're driving this Christmas, be sure to behave. If you see those blue lights, that's not Santa's sleigh. AAA estimates over 30% of the population will either drive 50 miles or more to get to their holiday destination. So, of course, be careful and have a Merry Christmas. Reporting from I-75 in Laurel County, Greg Robinson, WYMT 57 Mountain News. It's probably not the kind of fire department you would expect to see in Neon, Kentucky, but the $4 million facility will soon house the folks who work on a daily basis to keep their community safe and they've chosen the 10th anniversary of September 11th to dedicate the new building. Come Sunday, these fire engines will have a brand new home, and there's plenty of reason to celebrate, but also it's a time to remember the fallen. We are a brotherhood, not just in our city, our county, but nationwide, and this 10th anniversary is a celebration of that brotherhood and we will never forget. I just, I just think they've picked a very, very good day to honor them, past fire chiefs, and for everything that happened on that day 10 years ago. Sunday's dedication will begin at 2 o'clock. In Letcher County, Greg Robinson, WYMT 57 Mountain News. It's back to court today for a woman who's accused of murdering her well-known husband. A hearing is scheduled for Lisa Gillum in Laurel County. At her last hearing, a judge agreed to release Larry Gillum's medical records. That's what Lisa Gillum's attorney has been pushing for. Police say Lisa shot Larry in the chest at his London law office. Two Pulaski County men are behind bars after police find a meth lab. Police say they received a tip that a meth lab was in a home on Good Hope Estes School Road in Eubank. Once at the house, they say they found a one-step meth lab along with several items used to manufacture meth. They also found a small amount of processed meth and a pot plant. Police charged 37-year-old Darren Johnson and 34-year-old William Dow with manufacturing methamphetamine, among other charges. Two men are behind bars this morning after police find them allegedly injecting themselves with drugs inside a car wash. Police say they were in a green Cavalier acting suspiciously on US 25 in North Corbin on Wednesday. Arnold Frederick of Barberville and his passenger Kenneth Rose of Corbin were arrested. Both faced several drug charges and were taken to the Laurel County Detention Center. And you know what I was thinking of? You've got Maria, Katia, Irene, these all really sound like, you know, bad relationships. Like, when are we going to get rid of all these hurricanes in this hurricane season? I'm not touching that. <laughs> all right, let's go over to the mountain calendar for you guys in trouble. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
You're on a roll this morning. There's still no sign of a Letcher County inmate this morning or the jail transportation van he got away in. Police say 32 year old Stevie Wynn assaulted the driver of that van along Highway 15 and then vanished. Despite crews from several counties looking for him on the ground and in the air, they found nothing so far. WYMT's Paige Quiggins has more. Police say Wynn has family in the Little Collie and Thornton areas of Letcher County. If you know where he is, you should call police. The, transpor the transporting officer, Chester Stacy, was treated at Hazard ARH and was expected to be released. Federal agents spent hours Tuesday night searching a Corbin home. The home is one of two owned by Danny Peace, who was arrested last week after police said they found drug manufacturing and explosive materials inside his home on Leona Wyatt Road. At least 30 police officers and agents were seen searching the home on Beatty Avenue. Neighbors said several streets were closed and some people were asked to leave their homes briefly during the search. Good morning, I'm Greg Robinson. And I'm Macy Ensco. Today is Wednesday, December 30, 21st. It feels like <laughs> March. It it's does. It's so warm outside, especially in the morning. I can't believe it. It's around 60 degrees outside right now. Well, let's see if our Christmas heat wave will stick around. Let's check in with Brandon for a quick look at your forecast. At least two families have filed a wrongful death lawsuit in Indiana as a result of the stage collapse. The law firm representing both victims is claiming gross negligence and recklessness by both the promoters and producers of the concert at the fair featuring Sugar Land. A total of seven people died in the August 13th collapse. Well, some are calling it a miracle. A plane crashes into a home in California, and the only injury is a broken leg. It happened Monday in the city of Santa Monica. Officials say a single engine Cessna crashed into the home shortly after taking off from the airport. The pilot only had a broken leg. No one on the ground was injured. No word on what caused the plane to crash. Obama administration officials will get a first-hand look today at the devastation Hurricane Irene left behind. They'll visit several hard-hit states as many towns still try to deal with the daunting task of cleaning up. CBS's Jessica Stone has more from Washington. We'll return for another look at your local forecast and more news updates at 855. Stay with us. You're watching Mountain News this morning.